Hello everyone and welcome to this video over second evidence based instructional practice module where we are focusing on clarifying and sharing clear learning goals. My name is Carrie McDaniel and I am joined today by Misty Higgins and we are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. And this year we are focusing our work around addressing two essential questions. What evidence based instructional practices or EBIPs best support Kentucky educators in designing classroom instruction aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And how might teachers effectively implement the practices to help students meet the expectations of the CAS? We are currently in our third year of the three year implementation plan that is focused on evidence based instructional practices. So really addressing that question of how do we support educators in designing instruction aligned to the CAS by drilling down on effective evidence based practices. So then why should we focus on evidence based instructional practices? I think we would agree that all students deserve access to quality standards aligned grade level instruction because we know from research that the instruction students receive in the classroom has an impact on their overall achievement. By intentionally and strategically selecting and utilizing EBIPS, teachers help to ensure that students are working towards reaching their intended learning outcomes. We will be releasing six total EBIP modules in the fall of 2021 and spring of 2022. Here you can see the release dates for each individual EBIP. While there are numerous EBIPs we could have chosen, these six were strategically selected because they support students in reaching their intended learning outcomes across all content areas and within the CAS. For each of the six professional learning modules, we will be releasing a video overview, facilitation considerations for structuring the professional learning, a general overview which helps educators gain a better understanding of each EBIP and its importance, an introduction on the released EBIP and what the research currently says about it, and content specific resources that support implementation. So specifically, how you can implement this EBIT for math, reading and writing, science and social studies. So now let's look at the second evidence based instructional practice in our series, which focuses on clarifying and sharing clear learning goals. There are six key areas addressed in the narrative portion for this practice. The introduction provides a quick overview of the importance of using clear learning goals and success criteria to drive instruction and support students in reaching the grade level expectations within the CAS. The second section examines the research on uh, the role of clear learning goals um, and how they help students to commit to and stay engaged in the learning process and develop ownership of their learning. The next section takes a closer look at how using clear learning goals starts with teachers having clarity in their grade level standards and then using that clarity to drive classroom instruction and assessment. The section focused on establishing student clarity, or clarity examines the role of learning goals, relevance, and success criteria in helping students answer three critical questions. What am I learning? Why am I learning it? And how will I know I've learned it? The fifth section provides possible strategies teachers can use to help develop student understanding of the learning goals, relevance, and success criteria. Finally, the last section focuses on considerations and possible steps to use when co-constructing success criteria with students. In addition to the narrative portion, we have also included content-specific resources that focus on three areas of support. Connections between the practice of clarifying and sharing clear learning goals and the Kentucky academic standards for that content area. Um, it looks at planning considerations for implementing this practice in each content area. And then finally, strategies and resources to support educators in implementing the practice in their content area to support students in reaching those grade level expectations. And as always, thank you for watching this overview video of the second evidence based instructional practice. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to either me or Carrie.